So I just wanted to go into a little bit more detail about like my spline polish and reference state. So let's talk about sort of what's going on throughout here. Like sort of when I look at my spline pass, I see that my head is feeling kind of disconnected from the body and it's really just sort of going just like straight forward. And there's a lot kind of going on in the body, the butt and uh, the shoulders. And that's kind of all feeling dis distracting and also disconnected. So when I kind of look at this in my polish, this is feeling much more in a line and my head is kind of rotating up through this action. So it's kind of feeling more like the head is motivating this action and the body is feeling a lot more connected and kind of like this sort of unnecessary motion kind of right here and here. We can see in my, in my polish pass, that's sort of taken care of and the head is actually moving a little bit more connected to the body instead of feeling like the body is kind of detached from the head there. So that's kind of what I'm sort of doing, dealing with kind of when I'm working on this pass, really just sort of solidifying the mechanics and the character and kind of making sure that there's no sort of unnecessary movement. So it's a little tough to tell with the blur, but kind of throughout here, there's some sort of like busyness, like kind of how the head is dipping and then actually the spacing gets kind of even throughout here. And then it's sort of unnecessary, it sort of like overlaps and it's kind of like constantly moving. Whereas this is a little bit more simplified, kind of like there's a little bit more time spent on tighter spacing before the acceleration, which sort of lets us see the eye expression a little bit easier. And then we arrive just a touch faster too, and we don't kind of have this additional sort of change on the horns, which can again sort of be distracting. Like that sort of change in like the head tilt is sort of drawing our attention away from the change in expression. So here it's just really just about appeal. Like this is kind of very sort of non-distinct with sort of like how the eye patch is actually sort of presented right here. Whereas this, we're kind of getting a much stronger sort of feeling of, of curve and then straight. And that's kind of making it really feel like there's that three graphic line quality and then little things like obviously getting the muzzle out of the way of the flowers so this way you can see that sort of puckered shape as well and then just some little detail stuff like just to sort of get a little bit more weight on things just sort of get the head to sort of go down a little bit instead of just sort of having the whole body drop down at the same rate keeping the silhouette a little bit more a little bit more obvious getting the character out clear from the flowers uh, and yes I did have to animate these all these flowers individually, which was a big pain. There was a, a little bit of um, sort of like a, a simplified sim on it, on top of it. But yeah, like it was animating those flower pots and kind of groups of flowers together. But uh, that also gave me like sort of pristine control over all this stuff too. So here again, like just very even in kind of what this head move is doing. Like I'll just sort of track it on twos. We can kind of see that that spacing basically is even. Again, tracking it on twos. We just get much more interesting spacing here and much more variety in our spacing. We get a deeper arc and we get kind of a few more frames of acceleration and then, uh, and then a little bit more deceleration as well. So it just feels a lot richer and it feels a lot more energetic, but it also feels a lot more natural because we have those extra frames of acceleration and deceleration. And this also just kind of allows this faster move through here kind of allows the brows to almost kind of feel like they're pulling up. So it's like this sort of flatter to then this sort of rounder change. And then that sort of opens the eyes in kind of these three frames. Brows go up, brows go round, brows open the eyes, and then the eyes get really big. Whereas in the spline pass, that's all kind of missing because it's just sort of like a straight expression and we're kind of missing that sort of excitement. And that also just sort of doesn't give us enough time to sort of read the ear movement too. Whereas this, even though the body is sort of traveling up, we read that ear change a lot more clearly again, because it's kind of happening in a cleaner silhouette, but also just because the timing is a little bit sharper. So the overall sort of timing of actions 
drought here is pretty much the same, but we're reading in anticipation now. We're getting our head move a lot faster. We're reading that expression change. And we're getting a little left to right before we kind of do all this instead of just kind of having that all sort of bleed into the same movement. And again, this is a much better arc. Like this is kind of swooping up, which then also sort of kind of mirrors kind of the mechanics there, where this is a little bit more shallow and kind of a little bit more radial. So it's kind of like getting lost. Like the head doesn't really feel like it's as connected to the body. And then the arc of the head really only happens once the sniff is happening, instead of kind of feeling like the body goes down and then launches into the sniff. So that just gives us like a little bit more clarity about kind of like how he's motivated to go to the flowers. And then also just sort of keeping him a little bit more active and energetic. And then also just like, as you can kind of see here, we really kind of have all of this very isolated. And then there's still a lot of mechanics kind of going on down here. But because we've really led with the head and that arc really draws our attention, we feel the mechanics, but we don't necessarily focus on them, which sort of keeps us all of our attention just sort of right there. And so we drop down again and kind of do the same thing again, like really deeply go in and then kind of have all of our attention focused right here. Whereas like looking at the spline pass, this gets a little bit more muddy. Like the head's a lot more busy, kind of going left and right. And the head move as it sort of disengages is a lot sharper in the polish. And again, kind of like has like the expression change really pop to really draw our attention to it. So it's like the drag of the muscle the and the head is still moving a little slow. So you really, really feel like that pop of the expression change. Whereas this kind of has everything sort of happening at the same time. And then the timing that I've kind of stolen from this action, I then can kind of build into a hold, like not a perfect hold on the head. Like you can kind of see that the head and the muzzle are kind of moving at slightly different rates. And then just this little frame right here where the body is kind of continuing to move and kind of starts this action. So it's like the head stays nice and isolated, but the body is kind of starting to sort of drift over and down. So we kind of feel the silhouette pulling the, the character down where this it's a little chunkier and there's less of a sense that like the body is almost sort of pulling the head down quickly and then I can kind of start to ease in once I've sort of created this kind of expression where like the nostrils are really leading and that sort of allows me to sort of get to the flower in a much more interesting way so even though I get there a little sooner on my spine pass you notice it a lot more and you really kind of read the nose a lot more clearly, like sort of compare this frame to this frame. Like this is more about kind of registering the nose and kind of feeling like the nose sort of leads this arc. And then as the nose arrives, that's when kind of like the expression changes. And we're reading the half lid expression a little bit more too, just by kind of seeing a little bit more of the eye than we do in the spline. And then here, like kind of rotating the head down, but keeping the eyes up, keeps everything in frame. Uh, gives us a much more interesting silhouette, just in terms of shape, than kind of like this sort of overall kind of triangle. And then it also just sort of draws a lot more attention to sort of the eyes. Whereas this kind of everything is sort of all happening kind of on the same line. This sort of just kind of gives us this nice, sort of opposing triangle feeling. And that sort of draws a lot more attention to things. And even kind of getting the ear out of the silhouette, it kind of just sort of keeps things from feeling quite as radial. I also spent a lot more time in this expression where you can see this, like, you know, the nose is getting in the way of the eyes and kind of like the drunken feel is just kind of happening at expense of the expression. Like now we have sort of the opposite expression. We have a very flat lid, a very round lid. And then this expression change is obviously a lot more kind of thought out 
I have the muzzle involved a lot more. I have a lot more detail in there where the spline pass, it's really just the brows and eyes happening on the same frame. And then a little bit of compression with sort of the base lip controls. So hopefully this sort of gives you kind of a good idea of sort of what I like to sort of put into my polish pass. And especially like a lot of these changes in arcs and kind of like a lot of the physicality of the ending, like that I all sort of kind of mined from my reference. So hopefully this was interesting and uh, hopefully you guys learned a little bit about polish kind of comparing my spline and polish pass.